Dun, dun, dun. Uncle L here, and we have the professional in the house, SBBW Hunter, and we're going to be talking about Utah Lake catfishing. So we got numerous spots, and since we got the professional here, SBBW, tell us where to fish at Lincoln Beach. Uh, Lincoln Beach is usually pretty good at the harbor. You can fish uh, along the dikes. But it gets crowded. But if you go more to the northwest side of that, Lincoln Beach, uh, any old times will tell you to fish the L or fish where the hot springs are at. And you can get into some good ones. If you really feel like driving all the way around Goshen, there's some other road that launches into the lake. If you Google map it, you'll be able to see it. I'm not quite familiar with the name, but that's another good spot as well. Oh, it's over by the orchard. So the orchards are over there, and I think there's another good spot where it's a pull-off parking, and then it has high reeds, I think. That's the, the, the it, you, know, you kind of go around the Goshen Bend, like you're going to go towards uh, Saratoga, and that's where it's at. Um, and that, but that's quite a bit of a drive because you're going around another probably 10, 15 minutes from Lincoln, Lincoln. All right, so this is my observation. In the harbors, I mostly use bubbles or only cast out about maybe 5 to 10 feet. But at Lincoln Beach, when you're on the beach, you cast out way out there. Is that right? So in yeah, the harbors? On the points, uh, the, the, on the harbor, you could cast with the bubble. You could be maybe 30 feet. Or you want to be in the middle of the channel. But the problem, you have to deal with the traffic. There's a lot of boats. Because the boats are going to constantly be going back and forward. If there's a lot of people there. All right, then, let's let's change up locations again. How about Linden? Linden on the right side. I see, we down pretty good there. I have a friend. He told me a few days ago they they got about five out of there. Uh, there was a twenty pound cot over at the American Fork uh, Sewage Waste Management Plant where it comes into the lake. But it's a long walk, longer than the creek right next to Linden, or you have to have a boat and then just go where the little thing, where the cement grail, where you can see the water coming in. But with any luck, maybe you could catch another 20 pound out of there since a lot of people don't fish it. And that's what a lot of people forget. You fish parts of the lake that don't have a lot of traffic, fishing traffic, and you get into some good catfish numbers. When you're fishing places like Provo, that gets fish a lot. The size goes down. Your numbers go down. But if you're fishing mill rays along the reeds, on a good day, you're going to pick up more than just one. You're going to pick up six, seven, eight cats. Between four to seven is a pretty average weight. Anywhere between there, seven pounders are completely super average. Anything above ten or twelve pounds is a decent cat for the day. Yeah, so that yeah, that Linden, I think on the let's see, north side where the river comes in. Yeah, the little creek. Yeah, out there. I think that's a long cast and then you just soak it for a while. And then again inside the marina, I've caught him in the two to ten foot range under by the by the boat parking the what do they call those the docks i yeah, think night docks. nighttime's key i think nighttime and early morning usually uh -huh. maybe 12 o'clock at provo sometimes happens i think uh provo's been good in the mornings the mornings between uh some of the guys get as early as 5, 45 a.m. as soon as the gate opens and fish until about 10. If they don't pick anything up, they go home and get lunch. But mornings has been key. The numbers have been, as far as I know, in the morning have been better than in the afternoon. Afternoon is too hot. Everybody's moving around. Uh, you'll pick some up, but you're not picking up the numbers people are picking up in the mornings. Anywhere from 4 to 5 on a good morning, which is still kind of low. I, I think if I went, I was going to go out just catfishing, I would prefer to go, like I said, somewhere where there's less people and fishing up creeks, anything like that. And on a good afternoon, in a couple of hours, you could do six to eight decent catfish and you're going home. Unless you just catch and release all day. Uh, 
Are you familiar with Howard Creek at all? Nah, that's not on Utah Lake. Come on. Well, where it comes into the lake is Utah Lake. <laughs> yeah, that's that's ideal too. But I think mostly, uh, I think the hot spots are uh, Pelican, Saratoga, the Pump House, Provo. And those are pretty much all the same. It's just a matter of time before you catch them, and a certain time. Uh, American Fork, it could be, uh, uh, not, uh, yeah, American Fork Marina, it could be good. But same deal, if you cast far away where less people basically cloud around it, or you try to fish, cast towards a private area, it'll probably be better. On uh, some good years, you get into some decent amount of bluegill and decent caps, and then you might get lucky. This year is kind of different, but other years, People will be catching walleyes all the way as late as June on that harbor. Not extremely steady, but catfishing walleye day is not bad when you're catching at least a couple of walleye or one. That's a good bonus. Yeah, I find the the temperature plays a big role. Like too early in the spring, they're not biting, and then maybe towards the winter, the action dies off. So it's what I would say this year it was... March to, I would say, November, if it stays warm. Yeah, um, but if it gets colder in the colder months, you want to be hitting places like the Provo Golf Course where it connects to the lake. It could be good. Uh, there's a couple of other places where anywhere where um, process water comes in, it's warmer. The catfish stick around longer and you have better odds. You might catch a lot of bycatch like mudcats. Their hole is pretty annoying, but still, you can get into some good channels every once in a while. The upside of fishing places like that, too, sometimes you pick up some lot trout. They'll hit bait, depending on the year, or maybe there's not enough food around, and they'll hit a lot of bait. All right, you bring up bait. What's your preferred bait? Uh, the cheapest thing to do and the go-to, because it's the easiest thing to get, usually is wide bass, Utah Lake. Pretty much white bass is key for a lot of species. You'll catch walleye and white bass meat. You'll catch bluegill. you catch crappies will hit it on a small jig. It's just the most common thing probably everything eats. They make so many babies. So they spawn so much. They're a pretty key fish for a lot of things. Even carp will hit uh, white bass meat at times. Yeah, um, what I found was... Uh... If you're early in the year, remember all those babies spawn, and then you can catch those one and two inch white bass, and then just throw a whole one of those on the hook. That works well. My preferred method is I cut the heads off, and then make sure that the head size it's fairly even with the hook. You don't want a hook that's too small. Uh, if it's bigger, you'll probably be on the better side. But if it's too small and it that eyeball with the head stuck to the head does really well. You get some really good and hard hits. Sometimes it makes you wonder if maybe a pike is picking it up because when you try to set the hook, all of a sudden there's nothing there. Yeah, and then uh, also the next one would be shrimp. Uh, yeah, shrimp does really well. There's days with shrimp for some reason and they just want shrimp and they, they want nothing to do with white bass. But then... Oh, favorite of mine would be worms. I've done really well with worms. I caught some over 12 pounds of worms in the past. It just depends on location. Some locations you do really well with white bass. Some locations you do really well with worms, and it kind of surprises you. It makes you wonder. And not, I'm not talking huge pieces either, just little, maybe an inch and a half pieces or smaller. About an inch. And then, because you, you see people do bait, and it's almost like a buffet. They put a whole worm on there. They get hit, all their biting is the ends of the worms, and then when they try to set the hook, they feel any pressure, the fish is just, they just swim away. They just take a bite, get a little nibble, swim away, they don't catch them. I prefer to, like I said, be relevant to the hook size. Don't, don't go super really big in your bait, and your hook is small, and then all they do is nibble, and then when you try to set the hook, they're gone. How about the artificial, the stink baits? I don't know, that's up to you. You probably use them. I don't touch them. Mostly because the smell part of it, you gotta wear gloves, you gotta have some type of spandex to hold your bait in place, or pantyhose, or yeah, pantyhose to hold the bait on the hook. 
Uh, I've been told some of the blood stuff, older guys swear by it. It's supposed to be killer. Sardines are, are kind of one of those things where you get a sardine, put a bunch of things in the gut, put the hooks on the sardine, cast out there. This guy swears that he lands some 22 pounders. Uh, he has some photos with some really decent cabbage out of Pearl Harbor, but same deal. Uh, all night fishing, all day, usually in the summer. He'll, he'll get there from like 10 and fish all the way until 6, 7 o'clock in the morning and go home. Huh. But like I said, uh, he just seems to let it sit there and and then just wait for it to linger and attract anything to move in. But uh, that's not my preferred method. If they're biting, I'll fish for it. If not, I just do something different. It's mining. Yeah, so my experience with the artificial stink baits is the ones from in the tube from Walmart, I haven't caught anything on those, but there is one called Secret 7. Oh, man. It smells like you after a date night. <laughs> and that's the only one I had success with, and then I actually just put a piece of gauze on it and put the stick, push it down. But, man, that stuff stank, and... uh I just went back to worms and shrimp. Yeah, or white bass, because white bass is usually you can catch one, it's free, you don't have to pay anybody, you just got to cut it up yourself. Um, that's another option. If you have perch, you're allowed to use perch. Perch is a good one too as well. Um, like I said, and you never know what you can catch. Sometimes other fish species will hit it, like something that are like a walleye, but it's all up to, to what you decide to do with it. Um, the blood stuff at Walmart, there's supposed to be this one brand, I think it's called Max Blood. I think though that's, a, that's the one the old timers swear by. But like I said, I don't really mess with it because of the smell. It's just too much. Too much of a hassle. Chicken liver? Yeah, you're in your clothes. Yeah, you, it's a blood paste. And then sardines, salmon's another day people use quite a bit. Salmon's becoming a hot commodity to fish with. Uh, uh, for cats, channel cats at Utah Lake, that's a big thing that the last two, three years, people are really kind of been bringing up more and more. So we got a few more minutes. Let's tell the people what pound test line do you recommend? Are you still at a 100-pound braid? Depends. If, if they get in the rocks a lot and they're going into caves, like that one time you were too afraid, you could see a bow when you, you wouldn't stick your hand down there. A braid could be uh, it could be really good because you could just kind of find it when I'm out. Um, I usually right now I used to use depending on what I'm doing. If there's a lot of snacks, I'll upgrade and go heavy. I'll go as high as 65 or 40. Just depends on the mood I'm in. Mean. And then there's been times where we had the experience happen that I don't know if you hook a bike or something different. Uh, a steel leader for your hook, it's it's always a plus to have. You don't have to constantly retie or check your line because it gets cuffed against the rocks or your line gets weak and frail from, you know, scratching against different things in the water. Uh, you can only use a, a steel metal nylon coated wire. Melt it in place, put your hook on there, it'll last you all night. It'll last you, you know, a good amount of, at least 10 fishing trips. And you don't have to retie. And catfish don't really care. They just, don't care if they can see your line or not, if they're hungry and they're active, they'll hit it. They don't really, it doesn't really matter. I even caught walleye on steel leader fishing for um, catfish. Steel leader, nine of color steel leader, get a lighter, blend it into shape. You can use this thing and it's really easy to get it set up. And you know it's going to last. You know if you get lucky, line a pike or walleye, it's not going to break you off. Because nothing sucks more than having a big fish on. It's far away from the shore. You can see your rod bending. You got a decent heavy rod, so you can know it's a decent fish. And all of a sudden, your leader snaps, and it's gone. Well, I got to jump in because we only have a few uh, seconds left. My preferred one is mono, and I usually go from 8 to 12 pounds. Uh, the Cajun Red, the Game Fighter Trilene, and uh, it just depends on my mood, but that's what I pretty much use. A medium to heavyweight rod, but really any rod will work. And uh, unless you want a challenge, like I challenge myself, I'll throw a six round test. I cut up the ten pound catfish on six round test mono. Nothing expensive, just a cheap, cheap brand called Sepco. 
All right, I got to cut you off. We got five seconds left. Uh, thanks for being here, SB. 